With a rich history of over 100 years, the game of basketball still continues to evolve today. There are many rule changes for the 2023-24 basketball season. This will require extra preparation on the part of the officials in order to be ready to implement the changes correctly. Rule 7 has gone from nearly all throw-ins going to the nearest spot of the foul, violation or other stoppage of play, to now sometimes going to the nearest spot and sometimes going to one of the four designated spots on the court. Here is the change as set forth by the NFHS beginning with the 2023-24 basketball season. Rule 7-5-2 through 7-5-4 Established four throw-in spots. The nearest 28-foot mark along each sideline, or the nearest spot three feet outside the lane line on the end line. These spots are used when a team gains or retains possession in their front court after the opponent commits a violation, a common foul prior to the bonus, or the ball becomes dead, i.e. inadvertent whistle or held ball. Rationale simplifies throw-in procedure when a team gains or retains possession for situations other than an out-of-bounds throw-in. The NFHS rationale is for simplicity. As you can imagine this simplification brings us a whole host of different scenarios as to where the correct throw-in location will now be. The following set of video plays is not all-inclusive but will represent a lot of the frequently seen plays we are faced with in many of our games. Before we delve into some plays, here is a great reference sheet to help you correctly apply Rule 7-5-2 through 7-5-4. Please note that in the videos, what is referred to as the trapezoid is this area marked off by the dotted black lines. Now let's jump into some plays to help us better understand. Play 1, violation in the backcourt nearest spot. As red number 25 receives a pass from her teammate, she is then ruled for a traveling violation. The ensuing throw-in will be in the white team's backcourt. Thus, the throw-in spot will be at the nearest spot to the violation. Using our nearest spot diagram from our rules guide, red number 25 was outside of this trapezoid area and the ball is correctly put into play on the sideline opposite the table. Play 2, traveling violation in the front court. As the team in white inbounds the ball in their front court, the trail official rules a traveling violation on white number 21. Based on white number 21's location at the time of the violation, the trail official clearly and correctly indicates the nearest spot of the violation along the sideline which is now in the blue team's backcourt. Since the violation was committed by the player outside of the semicircle and outside of the trapezoid from our diagram, the throw-in spot is on the sideline. Oftentimes on throw-ins, players do not come to the exact spot where the designated spot throw-in should be. It is our responsibility as officials to make sure we inform the player to move to the correct spot if necessary. Play 3, Violation in the Backcourt, Nearest Spot the dribbler, blue number 25, commits a five-second closely guarded violation. The team in the white jerseys will be awarded a throw-in in their backcourt at the nearest spot to where the violation occurred. Anytime that the throw-in spot will take place in a team's backcourt, just remember that the throw-in will be awarded at the nearest spot of the violation. Play 4, backcourt violation, 4 spots. After several passes by the red team, red number 00 makes an errant pass and her teammate retrieves the ball but steps into the backcourt and commits a backcourt violation. Because the team in the white jerseys will be awarded the ball in their frontcourt, 
The correct throw-in spot for this violation now will be at the nearest of the four designated spots in White's front court, which happens to be at the 28-foot mark table side. Play 5, Violation in the Front Court. Blue number 0 drives towards the basket where he attempts to make a bounce pass to his teammate. However, white number 24 extends his left leg and illegally kicks the ball. A kicking violation is ruled by the center official. Since the violation occurred on the left half of the free throw lane on the center official's side, this means the lead official will have to move across to the other side of the lane to administer the throw-in at the three-foot mark on the end line. Many times, we see officials stay in their current position and not move across the lane on plays like this. This is incorrect and can be perceived as the officials being lazy. The lead official must move across to the other side of the lane to administer the throw-in in the correct spot. Many schools will not have a three-foot mark on the end line. So it will be up to the officials to ensure the ball gets put in the proper throw-in spot. Play 6, Violation in the Front Court, 4 Spots Here we see white number 1 attempt to try for goal that lodges between the ring and backboard on the left side of the basket. The trail and center officials both signal for a held ball. The lead official was positioned on the end line opposite the table when the ball became stuck. It appears as if the lead official were going to stay on the opposite side. However, the trail official motions for the lead official to move the throw-in spot to the other side of the free throw lane. This throw-in should take place on the end line, table side at the three-foot mark to be in the correct spot as the white team retains possession in their front court as a result of the alternating possession procedure. Play 7, held ball in front court. On a ball that gets knocked loose, several players go after the ball and there is a held ball ruled by the center and lead officials. Since the held ball occurred inside the free throw lane area, the ball is correctly placed along the end line. The center official does a good job of clearly indicating where the throw in spot should be. Since the team in the white jerseys retains possession as a result of the alternating possession arrow in their front court, the throw-in spot would be three-foot mark outside the nearer lane line on the end line on the left side of the free-throw lane. Play 8, Foul in the front court, four spots. Here we see the center official rule a foul on white number 3 along the sideline in front of white's bench. Starting with the 2023-24 basketball season, before the bonus is in effect, this foul will result in a throw-in at the 28-foot line which is the closest of the four designated throw-in spots. The center official now has become the new trail and the lead official moves over to double the line for this throw-in. Play 9, foul in the front court, four spots. As a Chicago State player passes the ball in towards the basket, Chicago State player number 24 is illegally contacted by Minnesota player number 0. Chicago State player number 24 was in the free throw lane when he was fouled. Chicago State is not in the bonus. The ensuing throw in correctly takes place at the nearest of the four designated throw in spots, which happens to be at the three foot mark outside of the free throw lane opposite the scorer's table. Play 10. Foul in the front court. As white number 2 dribbles the ball in his front court, the center official rules illegal contact by blue number 11. The throw in spot for this foul will be along the sideline 28 feet from the end line. On this court, the court has a mark to indicate the 28 foot line, which is also the mark that outlines the coaching box. Play 11. Foul in the backcourt, nearest spot. After a missed three-point try for goal by Minnesota, Chicago State ends up with the ball. As Chicago State player number three gains control of the ball, he is fouled by a Minnesota player on the center official's side in the backcourt. After a timeout, the official correctly awards the ball at the spot nearest to where the foul occurred because the resulting throw-in will be in Chicago State's backcourt. Play 12, out of bounds in front court. 
In Blue's front court, the ball gets knocked out of bounds by white number two. Remember that for all out of bounds, either in the front court or back court, the ball will be awarded from the nearest spot to where the out of bounds violation occurred. Play 13, incorrect throw and spot. On this play, there is a foul on white number three in Blue's backcourt as they transition into the front court. The foul is ruled by the new lead official. The foul occurred across the basket line on the center side of the court. Both the new lead and center officials point as if the throw-in will be opposite the table in the backcourt. However, the new trail official stays on the side of the court where he previously was positioned and inbounds the ball after a timeout well ahead of where the foul occurred in the backcourt. Taking another look at where the foul occurred in the backcourt in the free throw lane, the ensuing throwing should be on the end line opposite the table in Blue's backcourt. Play 14, incorrect throw and spot. On this play, white number 23 gets fouled just as he enters the free throw lane on the opposite side from where the trail official makes his ruling. The trail official clearly indicates where the throw in spot will be as he points to the other side of the free throw lane towards the end line. After the trail official reports the foul to the table, he sees the lead official has not switched with him and is positioned on his side of the court. The ruling official now points to the spot on the table side, which is the opposite side from where the foul actually occurred. As a crew we need to be aware of where the ruling official has indicated the throw-in spot. Also on this play, perhaps if the officials would have switched as required, the ruling official, who would now be the new lead official, would have put the ball in play on the correct side of the court where he indicated the spot in the first place. Play 15, Incorrect Throw-in Spot after a defensive rebound by white number 23, he quickly passes the ball up the court to his teammate white number 11. The official subsequently rules a foul on black number 3. The foul was ruled by the new lead official in transition. The foul occurred in white's backcourt. The ruling official initially points into the backcourt. However, after he reports the foul to the table, he then indicates the throw-in spot to be in white's frontcourt, well ahead of where the foul occurred. The correct throw-in spot should be nearest to the spot of where the foul occurred since it happened in White's backcourt. Play 16, Awareness After a missed free throw by the White team, the lead official rules a foul on White number 35 directly in the middle of the free throw lane. We can see the old trail, new lead official, conversing with the red coach. After beckoning in the substitute he walks to the opposite side of the court to converse with a player in red. At which time he then comes back to the table side of the court on the end line as the new lead official. It is very important that we have good court awareness of where our partner is putting the ball in play as both the lead and trail officials so that we can maintain proper court coverage and do not end up with two officials on the same side of the court as seen here. Play 17, Awareness A missed try for goal by the white team is batted by red number 11 to her teammate red number 14 who was immediately fouled by white number 1. The ruling official clearly indicates the throw-in spot should be on the end line. The old lead official walks the ball up and awards the ball on the sideline. This play could indicate that the crew did not properly communicate after the foul was ruled. While the foul may have originated outside of the semicircle, the resulting action has the player getting pushed to the floor and landing in the semicircle. As the non-calling official, we need to be aware of where our partner is indicating the throw-in spot and honor that spot unless we know the throw-in spot is incorrect. Play 18, Communication The team in white jerseys is in control of the ball in their front court when the ball is deflected by defense into the backcourt. White number 24 runs to the backcourt, or he retrieves the ball and proceeds to get back into the front court. However, he is then illegally contacted by black number 5. 
Should this throw-in be awarded on the inline or sideline according to our nearest spot diagram? This is a great example of where clear communication by the crew is essential. When the throw-in spot is close to being sideline or possibly inline, there must be good communication as we see here by the trail and center officials. The ruling official points to the designated spot where the throw-in should take place and the center official shows good awareness and hustles to get in position to make the throw-in while the trail official reports the foul. Play 19, you make the ruling. Here we have a play that leaves room for a lot of discussion. However, just focus on the fact that the officiating crew ruled that black number 4 was not in the act of shooting when he was fouled. You can clearly see that both teams are in the double bonus. So for discussion, if white only had 3 fouls, where would the throw-in take place? In conclusion, if you think about how many throw-ins there are in any given game, you can see the significance of correctly applying rule 7-5-2 through 7-5-4. As well, officials should be implementing correct signals and mechanics to ensure the throw-ins are administered efficiently and correctly. The teams are counting on the officials to adhere to the rules in order to maintain fair play. Think about a team who should have an inline throw in close to the basket who now have to inbound the ball from the sideline because of an official's mistake. So as we go into the new season, please make sure you do the following so you are fully prepared well in advance of your games. Make sure you read and reread your rules guide. Make sure you have full understanding of these changes and how to apply them. Make sure you ask questions if needed. Make sure you include this as part of your pre-game. Have a great season!